Welcome to you. Welcome to the Dean Show, which is a way of life where we try to present Islam in a true form to get the correct message out there. Today's show, and I will be your presenter, Yusha Hanif Evans. Today's show is going to be titled, The True Gospel of Jesus Christ, where we are going to, God willing, go through the gospel, the gospel that is in the hands of most Christians today, and you can find it almost every hotel, bookstore, church, anywhere you go, you can find this Bible. We're going to go through this gospel to try to pick out and find what was the true gospel of Jesus Christ. What did he really preach? And was it in, in contradiction to what is now known as the theology of Christianity? So God willing, we're going to find this out today. I begin by using a verse from the Gospels, from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. For if we want to know the true gospel of Jesus Christ, we must go to his own words. Leave alone the words of everyone else and let's refer to his words alone for some time, God willing. Jesus said, and I quote in the Bible, and this is life eternal. This is the way to have eternal life is that they might know you, the only true God, the only true God and Jesus Christ to whom you have sent. In these words, if you go into the Greek, means the only one true God and Jesus Christ who has been sent or who has a messengership. It's the same word that is used in the Quran for messenger, which is Risala or Rasula, is also the same word used in Greek and in Aramaic, which is the language that Jesus Christ himself spoke, peace be upon him. So he is saying that this is the way to eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, what was the real message or the true gospel of Jesus Christ? We're going to cover today, God willing, what did Jesus really preach? What was his real message? What was his real gospel? Who was the God that Jesus worshipped? Who was the God that he turned to? Also, what code of conduct did Jesus follow? Did he follow a law? Did he follow a way of life? And if so, then what was that way, way of life and what was that code of conduct? Number four, did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claim divinity for himself? Did he claim out of his own mouth that he was divine? Or did he claim otherwise? And was this something that was attributed to him after his death? We will look at this, God willing. And lastly, was Jesus crucified for the sins of humanity? This is the big one. This is the big one because as Paul himself said, without Christ crucified, there is no Christianity. So was Jesus Christ crucified for the sins of humanity? Is this a teaching of the Bible? Is this correct? Did this happen? We will find out today, God willing. First, let's go to what did Jesus preach? What was the gospel message of Jesus Christ? What was this good news, which is what the gospel means? What was this good news that Jesus, peace be upon him, brought? Jesus said, and I quote, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, nor is he that is sent greater than him that sent him. And this is from John chapter 13, verse 16. He said, Verily, verily, this is a way of stressing, repeating this word, Verily, verily, stressing that I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, and he that is sent is not greater than the one who sent him. So he himself is saying that I am not greater than my Lord, nor am I greater than the one who sent me. I am the one who is sent, and I am not greater than the one who has sent me. Very clear words. Very clear words. Open any Bible. These are the words in red from Jesus Christ himself. Also, when I quote Jesus, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Again, Jesus Christ is saying that the Father, speaking of God, which is a way that the Jews and the way that Jesus termed God in a sense that He is the Father of everything that exists. He is the reason for being, for everything that exists. He is the creator, the fashioner, the sustainer of everything. So the Father in that sense, so that the people could have some relation to God, which the Jews had cut off. They had cut off all relations with God and you had to go to them as an intercessory and a mediator to get to God. So Jesus was trying to bring God back into that personal fold by using and referring to Him as the Father. And He said that the Father is greater than I. He did not equate Himself with the Father. He said the Father is greater than I. Also from the words of Jesus. And Jesus answered Him, the first of all the commandments. This is the greatest of all the commandments and the first of them is to hear, O Israel, to listen, Israel. 
The Lord our God is one God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And the second is to love thy neighbor as they love thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The two greatest commandments, because the disciples were arguing, or they were debating about which commandment of the Ten Commandments of Moses were greater, or of all the commandments. So they went to Jesus and they said, what is the greatest commandment? He did not even refer to the commandments of Moses. He said, the greatest is, number one, that you love the Lord your God, your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Any Muslim would not, would not be in any way unfamiliar with these two terminologies. This is something in Islam that is known as the rights of the creator and the rights of the creation. This is what it separates. You have in Islam the rights that belong to the creator and then the rights that belong to the creation. This is what Jesus Christ was teaching. The rights that belong to the creator that you worship him and love him with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And then the, the creation is that you love them as you love yourself. And this is Mark Chapter 12, verse 29 through 31. Also Jesus said, And he saith unto him, Why do you call us me good? Because one person came to him and said, Good master, tell me how I can have eternal life. He said, Why thou callest me good? For there is none good but one, and that is God. And if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. The commandments of who? The commandments of Moses. This is what he was speaking of, the commandments of Moses, as he himself was a Jew, speaking to Jews. Jesus said unto her, I ascend unto my father and your father. Speaking to Mary Magdalene, I ascend unto my father and your father. He equated my father and your father as equal. He did not say, you're coming to me and then I'm going to the father. No, me and you are going to the same God. I am ascending unto the father, my father and your father, my God and your God. He said very clearly, my God, God, the, the creator of all that exists is my God and your God, equating them the same. Just as much as he is our God, he was Jesus' God and vice versa. Very clearly in the teachings of Jesus Christ, what he taught. He taught that there was a God who was the father and fashioner of all things, the creator of everything that exists, and that was his God, and it was equally my God. Who was the God that Jesus worshipped? So if this was his message that there was a God and that he was my God and your God, who was this God? Jesus said, and I'm quoting another verse that I used before, which I will do many times during this talk because I want them to be burned and implanted into your head. And Jesus answered, the first of all the commandments is to hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength, and to love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The first of this was that you, the hero, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. This is a, a quote from Deuteronomy. This is a quote saying, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. This was the God that Jesus worshipped. Jesus said to her, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God, and to your God. Who was the God that Jesus worshipped? This, this God, the creator of all that exists. The Lord's Prayer. And Jesus taught them how to pray. He said, and pray thus, Our Father. And he was referring to the disciples. I'm teaching you how to pray. Our Father, equating, equating God the same in all respects with all of them. Our Father, who art in heaven, not on the earth, not here in this circle with you. I am not God. I am not the Father. The Father is in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And this is also a teaching of Islam that God is in heaven, that God is on, above the throne in, 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 in the heavens. This is what Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Matthew 6 and 9. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him and said, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why do you call us me good? For there is none good but one, and that is God. This was the God that Jesus worshipped. This is who he said was good. God. God and God alone. And this was the God that Jesus Christ worshipped. Peace be upon him. Let your light shine before men, Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 16, that they may see your works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So let your shine, light shine before men so that they may see your good works and they may glorify your Father which is in heaven, not on earth, not here with you. I am not God. God is in heaven. So they will glorify him. Now, what code of conduct did Jesus follow? Was there a code of law? Was there a way of life that Jesus Christ himself followed? 
was there. Let's find out. Let's see what he himself said. Let's see what his own words say about this. I quote Jesus again in Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot, a comma, or a tittle, a period, shall in no wise pass from the law until all is fulfilled. He said, I have come to fulfill the law. What was the law? The law of Moses. I have come to fulfill the law of Moses, and not one period, not one comma, will be changed until it is fulfilled. And what was the first law of Moses? The first commandment? Thou shalt have no other God before thee. Thou shalt worship nothing in the heavens, nothing in the earth, nothing you create with your hands shall be your God. I am your God and God alone, and I am a jealous God. I do not like that my association should be given to anyone. And Jesus is saying that he has come to fulfill this law. Jesus Christ also said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, this is Matthew 5 and 19, the continuation of the first two verses. Whosoever shall therefore break any of these commandments, he shall be and teach men to break the commandments. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever shall teach these commandments to honor them shall be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So whoever breaks the commandments and teaches others to break the commandments, to do away with the law, to break the law, shall be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But those who teach to obey the law and to continue the law will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So, we have the teachings of Paul. For those of you out here who are practicing Christians, who know about Christianity, we have Paul the Apostle's teachings who tell us to do away with the law. This was the entire summary of the 13 books that Paul wrote, that we have to do away with the law and just accept Jesus Christ crucified and this leads to our salvation. But as we see from the words of Jesus, and we're going to get to this a little while where Paul makes these statements, but I'm just giving you a precursor to this, that we see all of these teachings are in direct, in direct contradiction to the very, Jesus, very teachings of Jesus Christ himself, BSP upon him. Did Jesus claim divinity for himself? Did he say that he was God? Did he explicitly say that he was God? Anywhere in the New Testament. Let's see his own words and find out. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why thou callest me good? For there is none good but one, and that is God. Now, had Jesus Christ been divine, this would have been the perfect opportunity for him to expound on this doctrine. This would have been the perfect opportunity for him to say that I am God, come in the earth, in the flesh, I'm going to die for your sins, and if you accept that sacrifice of my sin offering, then you will go to heaven. But this is not what he said. He said, why you call me good? For there is none good but one, and that is God. And then in the next verse he said, so if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. This was the way to eternal life, not accepting my blood sacrifice for the, sins of, for, for, for the salvation of your sins. So we see that he would always reiterate again and again that the glory belonged to God alone. None of it he claimed for himself. He did not claim divinity. Explicitly anywhere in the Bible. I challenge anyone to go find me an explicit verse in the Bible where Jesus Christ calls himself God or calls himself divine. It's not there. You'll waste your time looking. But I feel free. I challenge you. Go look. Find it. Jesus Christ also said, and he went a little farther, and he fell on his face and prayed. He fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. If he was divine, if he was God, what would have been the purpose of him falling on his face, putting his face on the earth, as Muslims do five times a day, to show his sincere humbleness before God, before the creator of all that exists, to, to ask about his condition. He knew they were coming to want to crucify him. What was his answer? If he was God and he wanted it to pass away from him, he could have just willed it to be. He could have just said, I don't want to go. And that would have been it. He was the creator of, he would have been the creator of everything if he was divine. But being that he was not divine, he fell on his face in the most humble position that you can become on this earth. You can't get any lower than your face on the ground. Calling to the one who is most high above the heavens. Calling out to him. Supplicating to him to remove this from him. If he was divine, what would have been the point, what would have been the point in this? It would have been frivolous. It would have been almost 
a phallus. It would have been foolishness to do this. But being that he was not divine, that he was just like me and you, a man chosen by God as a messenger, he fell on his face asking to be removed from this. And this is Matthew 26, verse 39. Also the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He didn't say, pray to me. He said, I'll teach you how to pray. Pray to the Father who is in heaven. Don't pray to me. Don't pray in my name. Pray to the Father who art in heaven. This is how Jesus Christ taught it to pray. Lastly, the big one. Did Jesus Christ, was He crucified for the sins of humanity? Because without this, without the blood sacrifice, as Paul himself attests, with no Christ crucified, there is no Christianity. Our faith is in vain. There's nothing, there's no point in it. Because the entire faith of Christianity revolves around the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I know this as I was a former Christian, former youth minister, former believer of this doctrine that Jesus Christ was divine, that I had to accept His sacrifice for my sins, that He was the intercessory, the mediator to God. I believed all this myself, so I understand it. But now I have more knowledge. I've read and looked and researched to what Jesus really taught. So let's see what He said about His own crucifixion. Did He say anything about it? Was it a teaching that was taught in the Bible? Could it have been? Would it have worked? Let's see. Let's go to the law of Moses. The law that Jesus said He came to fulfill. What is this law He came to fulfill? In Deuteronomy 21 and 23 it says, And if a man have it committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain there all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that hangs is accursed of God. He that is hanged is accursed of God. He's cursed. Anyone that hangs and is hanged on a tree is cursed of God. From the writings of Paul, Paul himself said that the crucifixion was a stumbling block for the Jews. That the very crucifixion of Jesus Christ was what was preventing the Jews from accepting this message. Why? Because Paul himself said, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Paul says that the law was a curse. The same law that Jesus said He came to fulfill. That the same law that Jesus said that whoever teaches this, whoever breaks it, whoever teaches others to break it, is the least in the kingdom of God. And whoever teaches others to fulfill it, to, to obey it, is the highest in the kingdom of God. This very law, Paul calls cursed. Why? Because he said, Jesus Christ being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And this was referring back to that verse. And this is in Galatians 3 and 13. So Paul himself, being a Pharisee, knew the law of Moses. He knew that everyone that was hanged on a tree is cursed by Jewish law. Therefore, he had to explain by saying that Jesus Christ took the curse upon Himself for humanity. And He became cursed on the tree, therefore He took our curse. So that sounds good. It sounds logical. It sounds rational. But does it fit in with the Bible teachings? Does it again fit in with the law that Jesus came to teach? Let's see. Had Jesus been crucified, He would have been cursed according to the law of Moses. He would have been cursed. This is why they laughed at the Christians, the Jews, the Paul, Pauline Christians, when they said that Jesus Christ has come and sacrificed Himself on the cross for your sins, therefore accept Him. They laughed because they said, how could He be the Messiah if He went on a tree and was, was, was crucified? He cannot be the Messiah. You cannot crucify God's Messiah. Again, was Jesus really cursed on behalf of humanity as Paul proudly proclaims? Was Jesus Christ cr cursed? Did He take our curse on Himself? Could this have worked? Could He have taken our curse? And then therefore, freed us from the curse of this law and the curse of our sins. Let's see what the law says. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity, the sins of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquities, the sins of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. This is Ezekiel. 18 and 20, the law of Moses said that I cannot bear the burdens of anyone else. You cannot bear my sin. I cannot bear your sin. I cannot bear my son's sin. He cannot bear my sin. The righteousness, the good that you do shall be on you. The bad that you do is on you. You have to be acceptable for it. This was the law that Jesus came to fulfill. This was the law that Jesus came to teach and told to be taught. Would this same Jesus, this is a question I propose to you. I propose this question to you honestly and earnestly. Would this same Jesus 
whose purpose, as stated himself, was not to change the law, but to fulfill it and to obey it, then accept a mission, crucifixion, that was in every way contradictory to this same law. Let me reiterate, restate this. Please ask yourself this. Would the same Jesus, whose entire purpose, as he himself stated earlier in the presentation, was that he came to fulfill the law and to obey it, would, the, would he then accept a mission, i.e. crucifixion, that was in every way contradictory to this law? This doesn't make sense. This cannot make sense. How would he accept a mission going on the cross that was in contradiction to the same law that he came to teach? As we see, brothers and sisters, as we see my fellow human beings, my fellow Christians, Jews out there listening, Muslims, this cannot be. Jesus Christ would not have accepted this mission. This is why when he knew that they were coming to crucify him, this was why the Jews said that if you want to get rid of Jesus, if you want to abolish his message, hang him on a tree. Because we know by our law, whoever goes on a tree is cursed. This will be your evidence against him if we put him on a tree. And Jesus knew this. This is why he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, fell on his face, and asked God, remove this from me. Take it away from me. Don't allow me to go to this. He did not come for this purpose. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane and asked to be removed from this purpose. But he also said, neither my will be done, but yours. If you want to put me on a cross, then I'll accept it because I am a Muslim. I am one who submits himself to the will of God alone. So therefore, he would have accepted it if God would have given it to him. But he understood the ramifications that would have came upon it. It would have been detriment to his message had he been crucified. It would have been detriment to the Jews who he was calling to Islam, calling to the worship of the one true God. It would have been in detriment to that message for him to be cursed on a tree according to their own law. Therefore, God, we believe as Muslims, removed him from this. Go read the Gospel of Barnabas, it's there. God removed him from this. Go read the Gospel of Thomas. Go read the Dead Sea Scrolls. Go search. Expand your horizons from this Bible. Expand your horizons from this one book that we have in our hands. And God willing, the next show that we're going to do is going to be based on just this book, the Word of God. Today's Bible, is it the Word of God or is it the Word of man? Go find other writings of the other apostles, the Apostle of Thomas, the Apostle of Barnabas. Go find the writings and read them. They tell this very, very, very same story that I'm telling you right now, brothers and sisters. And it's in the Bible if you look in the right places. So, I finish by saying, what was the true gospel of Jesus Christ? What was it? What is the true gospel? Can it be summed up very shortly and very sincerely? Where is it? Where can we find the true gospel? If it's not in the Bible, which bits and pieces of it are, but it's also mixed up with what Paul taught, and we see very clearly that the teachings of Paul were in direct contradiction to the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. The teachings of Paul saying that we must abolish the law, nail it to the cross, the law is cursed, do away with the law. He even wrote to the Galatians, rebuking them for becoming tied up in the law. He said, Oh, you foolish Galatians, in the first verse. Why is it you have gone after the law when Jesus Christ came to free us from the curse of the law? Again, I repeat to you the verse, that those who break any of these small commandments and teach others to do so, anyone who teaches another person to break the law of the commandments is the least in the kingdom of heaven. And those who teach to obey the law, to follow the law, those are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, which Jesus taught to obey the law. The, the, the apostles taught to obey the law. Muslims of today teach, obey the law of God. This is our entire message to humanity. Obey the laws of God. They're there for a reason, for a purpose, to guide us. They should be obeyed. So what was the true gospel message, the true good news of Jesus Christ? Let me take you from the Bible for a moment. Let me take you out of the Old Testament. Let me take you out of the New Testament. Let me take you into the Last Testament. Let me take you into the last message, the last gospel of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon Him. In the Quran, the book revealed by God to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who came 570 years after Jesus Christ. The one who Jesus Christ said, I have to go away, but there's one coming after me who will reveal all of this to you that I cannot tell you. This same Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he was speaking of. This same Muhammad brought a book called the Qur'an 
that cleared up all these discrepancies. Just open it and read it. I'm going to give you just five to six short verses that I believe are so beautiful about the gospel of Jesus Christ that tell the message all by themselves. Please listen to them. Open your ears. Open your heart and listen. He said, and these are the words of Jesus. If this was a red letter edition Quran, these words would be in red. Jesus said, I am indeed the servant of Allah, the one true God. Allah being the one true God. I am indeed the servant of God. And He hath sent me with revelation. And He hath made me a prophet. He is the one that sent me. And He hath made me blessed wherever I go. And He hath enjoined on me prayer and charity for as long as I live. Which we know that Jesus Christ always was praying. Always was giving to the poor and the needy. Always helping the destitute. He hath made me kind to my mother. And He has not made me overbearing or miserable. So peace is on me the day I die. Peace is on me the day I was born. The day that I die. And the day that I shall be raised again to life. Such was Jesus, the son of Mary. It is a statement of truth about which they vainly dispute. The last verse. So this is Jesus, the son of Mary. This is the gospel of Jesus, the son of Mary. It is a statement of truth about which they vainly dispute. This was the gospel message of Jesus Christ, that there is one God. He is alone without partner and he should be worshipped and his laws should be obeyed. And I am the one that is sent as a messenger to you. And I should be followed. So I ask you and abhor you, please, to search within your soul and ask yourself, what was the true gospel message of Jesus Christ? If you want to be a true Christian, which means to be Christ-like, to be following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, it is that you must worship God alone without a partner and that you must obey the laws and the commandments of God. I thank you very much for your time and your attention and hope that you find this of some benefit. Pass this on, spread this message, as this is what Jesus Christ himself wanted to be spread. This is his message. And I ask you to continue to log on, continue to come back and look at the shows, continue to come and look for the new shows, because we are trying to present the true teachings of Islam, which we believe in all the prophets from Adam to Muhammad and all the ones in between. And we're trying to teach their true gospel message of all of them, that it was the same, that God is one and that he should be worshipped alone and that his law should be obeyed. Peace be unto you. Welcome and thank you for coming to the Dean Show.